everyone. Welcome to our Stocks to Watch series, your trusted source for investment opportunity information. I'm Ashley Berry. Today, we're welcoming Matt McMullen, CEO of Simulacra Corporation. It's a holding company that operates three companies focused on artificial intelligence and high quality humanoid robots. Matt, thank you so much for being with us. Welcome to Global One. Hi there. Nice to be here today. Hey, I am so excited for this conversation. Really fascinating technology. Simulacra now encompasses three distinct companies, as I understand. We have Abyss Creations, Realbotics, and Anthropomorphic Figure Dynamics, or AFD. Perhaps you can share the story of how you began working in robotics, what inspired you leading up to today, and of course, the company's current mission and vision. Right. So my uh, my background uh, going way back a couple of decades was kind of uh, in the special effects um, arts. And uh, I originally started my first company, Abyss Creations, uh, with the intent of creating the most realistic, posable mannequin that had ever been created. Uh, so that ended up uh, kind of going a little bit sideways when uh, I started getting a lot of emails from people asking if such a thing could be used as an adult product. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of went with that, but you know, primarily my, my whole drive was, hey, I get to do art, I get to do what I love and perfect what I'm, what I'm good at. And so I spent the better part of 20 years working on pretty much just focusing on Abyss Creations. Um, and you know, flash forward to about 2016, I started to get extremely interested in the idea of incorporating robotics and artificial intelligence into these highly realistic figures that I had created. Um, and that was where this kind of journey uh, really started, was just thinking about what was involved with that and really kind of what happened that changed my thinking and my direction creatively was you know, these common everyday technologies were now in our hands when we have a smartphone that you can uh, dictate to and you have text to speech engines and you have different types of artificial intelligence like Siri and Alexa. So I got really excited and driven to figure out how can I merge that with what I'm, you know, traditionally good at, which is the physical arts of creating these very realistic figures. Uh, so now we have created this other company called Realbotics, and we focused strictly on creating an AI that was really kind of focused on one-to-one -one connection with people on a personal level versus an AI that's kind of like a slave, like your car, you know, your Tesla drives you around, and that's really its sole focus. Um, our goal was to create kind of a friend um, using AI technology and to give that friend a embodiment that was highly realistic. And so Realbotics was founded and we raised a little bit of money, but very quickly realized we needed a little bit more. So we created Simulacra um, and I moved all of my various LLC companies under the umbrella of Simulacra and we did a seed round and then we did a series A and now we're really, really excited to be moving on to next steps. Well, fantastic. And you know what? You, you say they're realistic looking. You know, I was looking at the imagery and I really couldn't believe just how realistic they look. And I'm assuming that these robots truly have impacted people's lives. Maybe you could share some testimonials of, you know, this transforma transformation resulting from the use of your robotics. Well, um, let's just say because of, you know, as I mentioned, the personal connection that we've always been focused on, um, you know, both both from a practical standpoint and and the 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 bodies and the robots themselves, aside from the mechanical components, um, we've had literally thousands of people's lives changed for the better mm -hmm. um, by having these kind of artificial companions. And you know, up to up to the point where we created the AI and the robot um, technology, people were really using their imaginations to kind of imagine a character or imagine this personality that might embody this, this doll that they had. Um, and, you know, I think now we've given them the tools to actually create that, that personality. So um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. There, there are so many cases of people who for one reason or another, whether by choice or by not, um, they were not able to create the same kinds of relationships and deeper bonds that many of us take for granted. And having that simulated relationship 
was really game changing for them, you know, and, and there are so many different cases. We could spend an entire hour just talking about uh, some of the people that I've met along the way. Mm. So I'd love to hear those stories sometime. Maybe you could describe the process of what it takes to create these robots and really what a typical day looks like for you. Um, well, I wear a lot of hats right now. So, um, you know, I, I could be doing a Zoom interview in the morning and then uh, I could be making a fiberglass mold before lunch. Um, and I could be casting silicone and detailing uh, a face and configuring a robot in the afternoon. So I'm pretty all over the place. Um, but the the process is, it, it depends, you know, like if, if you're talking about, we wanna make a, a completely unique character from scratch, um, it really involves the, the physical side of creating the model. Um, first, I use digital technology. I'll use uh, 3D modeling, sometimes scanning, you know, if it's a, an individual that we're trying to actually replicate. We will scan them and we'll take that data, turn it into a 3D print, which we will subsequently turn into a physical sculpture. Then we'll mold it, then we'll make a face. It's a process. Hmm. Uh, so creating something from scratch, can it could stretch out six to eight months. Um, whereas the physical part of reproducing something, it's just a matter of casting the silicone, setting all of the you know components that go inside of the body, um, in the case of the robot, you're kind of putting all those little mechanisms together and then figuring out where those are supposed to be in relation to the surface of the skin. So, um, yeah, it's like I said, it's a process. So, Matt, maybe you could help me understand sort of the evolution of your work from this point forward and, and how you're addressing the current challenges that you face, if there are any. Uh, well, there's tons of challenges, um, you know, as, as you may be aware um, at this point in time, there's there's actually very few people on the entire planet who are working on, uh, you know, full scale robotics, let alone robots that actually are meant to look like human beings and behave and move and, and sort of fill the space that a human being fills um, physically and, and even mentally. Um, so I, I think that the, the challenges be, being that there are many are, are fine because we're going to get through all of that. Um, what I really see is focusing on taking all of this stuff and continuing to push that curve in terms of the realism of uh, the, the, the physical robot itself, the AI functionality, because I mean, that technology is really moving at breakneck speed right now um, with, you know, with, with chat GPT. Really, that's like, the, the buzzword right now, but it's really just the beginning. Um, and, and, you know, some, some of the tools are now available to us as developers, and we're super excited to just continue that deep dive into how we can allocate those resources. So um, I, I think more than anything, I would love to see this whole thing kind of continue moving forward, full body robotics, you know, being kind of the ultimate goal. Um, starting, you know, we started with the head, we made this highly realistic modular head that people can actually interact with, you can attach it to a, a body. And now we're working our way down into the body, making different parts of the body move and, and for practical things, you know, it's very important that the functionality has a point and a purpose behind it. So um, that's, that's really the focus is just how, how do we go to this, this, you know, kind of dream point of having a full scale, full body robot that can kind of do whatever a human does. And the true art behind it, you, the brains behind the operation, what's it like for you to look at these, like to physically look at them and touch them and know that you put so much into it. And then hearing these amazing stories from people saying that this has changed my life. What's it like for you at the end of the day? What excites you the most? Um, I, I think what excites me the most is potential for the future. I mean, I, because as, as an artist, and, and I think this is a common thing for, you know, creatives uh, across the board, it's just never quite good enough for me. I mean, even I, I think sometimes I get more of a perspective from a third party who's looking at something and, and I can just like see the awe in their face and, and they, they can, I don't know. I kind of vicariously enjoy it through them, but the reality is I'm always picking it apart. So I'm constantly <laughs> like, we got to fix this. We got to fix that. So it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a balancing act. 
and and trying to you know temper my uh, my expectations and be able to sort of see in others like okay well I must have done something right. Um, but, you know, I think therein lies the the thing that motivates and drives us to become better. Mm, absolutely. Great point. So finally, Matt, any misconceptions about robotics that you'd like to clarify or anything specific that you would like those to understand about the robots you produce? Um, well, I, you know, I think across the board there, there is a um, the, if not for everyone, but for some people, there's this kind of knee jerk fear um, to that, you know, that's sort of associated with the technology of robotics and AI. Um, and I, I think it's, you know, it's understandable, but we, I think we have to be realistic and we need to look at why are we afraid? It's most likely because of a series of movies you may have watched growing up. Um, yes, we need to respect this technology. I do believe that it does need to be somehow kind of regulated in the sense of you can't just let it do anything. Um, you know, similar to any kind of technology, you have to be smart about it. And, you know, I, I still have faith in the human race. I think we'll figure it out. Um, but I, I think the biggest misconception that I that I hope people are opening their minds to is like what kind of positivity these will bring to our lives versus that knee jerk fear, because I think that any anything that's based in fear is probably clouded and it's actually not necessarily the best angle to look at something this included. Mm, so you're just asking people to kind of open up the aperture and understand it from every angle. Yes, Matt correct. Colin, CEO of Simulacra Corporation, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your important story, fascinating AI technology. Here with us on Stocks to Watch on Global One Media, we look forward to sharing additional updates with our audience. Thank you very much for having me.